Ray Minkowski sitting at FitWorks, training gym in DeKalb, Illinois, with NIU Husky alum, NFL quarterback, the one and only Chandler Harnish. How you doing, Ray? Good, Chandler. Chandler, thanks for coming out today. We appreciate you giving up a bit of your day. When you're normally working for another NIU alum, Gary Tad, where are you working today? Well, I work at uh, Pinkston Tad Industrial Commercial Roofing in DeKalb, and uh, I've been working there for about uh, getting close to a year now and uh, working sales. So before that, what were you doing? I was doing a little bit of everything. I was playing for the uh, Indianapolis Colts and then on to the Minnesota Vikings and the Arizona Cardinals, Cardinals most recent. Cool. So we knew Chandler back when he was a quarterback here at NIU in DeKalb. Uh, he was actually a gym member at FitWorks during part of his time at NIU. One of the reasons we want to bring Chandler in is we wanted to talk about, you, you know, Chandler wasn't born to play football in the NFL. He wasn't born to be a Division I athlete. And a lot of times people think that, well, you must just be good. And the backstory, what it takes to get there is left out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Like, what was it like? For example, you mentioned one day at lunch that first game of junior year, you didn't start. Right. How did you handle that? Yeah, so going into my junior year in college, now remind you, you know, I was a redshirt junior, so I was actually a senior in school. So I'd been at Northern for four years. I was kind of, quote unquote, the man on campus had, had started for NIU for the previous three years, and, or for the previous two years, excuse me. And, and uh, I was looking forward to another great year, and I was coming off a knee injury. And, you know, I, there was a few things that kind of went into play, but I did not get a start. I didn't even play my first game of my junior year. And, um, and that was really, really difficult. You know, I almost quit. Um, and during that time, you know, I really kind of went back to the fundamentals. I, I, I went back and, and just kind of mentally, you know, I thought back to who's been there for me all, all along as far as support staff, family, friends, you know, what has got me to this point and who's going to help me get back to where I want to go. And, um, you know, there were so many things that played into it through, you know, spiritual, mental, emotional, and then the physical side, you know, really understanding my body, taking care of my nutrition and uh, strength training and getting my knee back into to shape. And then also just uh, mentally getting back to the, the confidence level of being a starting quarterback. And I think two things that come from that, and I, like, we talk about it a lot here. We try and do this in our videos. We try and do it in the content we put out on media is, one, you didn't quit, and confidence is a really big deal. And that's something like you have to work on maintaining the confidence, right? You have to look at believe. You have to look at yourself as being able to do it. Yeah, you know, one thing I've always been kind of taught is, especially if you want to be a leader in whatever realm that is, whether it's sport or school or any extracurricular, you have to flirt with the line of uh, confidence to cockiness. You have to flirt on that line. You have to be so confident in yourself, and uh, and the only way. I've really found to, to find that confidence is repetition and, and just doing it day in and day out, finding that consistency because the more you do it, the more confident you become, you know, the more natural it becomes for you, you know, whether that be studying, uh, you know, for me watching film and then going out and practicing, throwing on the side, doing the extra things um, that I knew would give me the advantage because everyone at my level had extreme athleticism. Right, but I had to do the extra things, and if you do those extra things, you naturally build uh, that confidence deep down. It's it, it's a deep, deep feeling that no one can take from you. And that's the result of repetition. And that's one of the things we see some of the younger athletes because they're good, they kind of sit out the extra repetition. They don't put in the extra work, and then when they get to crunch time, they get that injury. They get starting spot is on the line. They don't know how to handle it because they, they don't have the confidence to still believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. They focus on their sidetrack, they're derailed because of the injury. Now, what would you tell what would you tell the parents? What would you tell your parents? Let's say you're in sixth grade. Would you tell your parents, if you were able to go back in time, have Chandler be physically active, get involved in some type like speed and agility training? <laughs> yeah, you know, you gotta be uh, as involved as possible, you know, whether that be multiple sports, you need to be training, especially nowadays as, as training has really picked up. 
just to keep up with the Joneses as a, as a middle schooler and then getting into high school, you have to be doing that extra. You know, whether it be basketball practice or swim or football, you've got to come in and get your speed and agility, functional movement, you know, the core strength, you know, fl flexibility, things like that. You have to be doing those things because if you don't, you will fall behind. And if you fall behind, you're not going to find the success. You're not going to develop the confidence that you need to succeed. And then eventually you're probably just going to, you know, I hate to say it, but kind of wilter away and you're going to look for other avenues. But if you want to be an extreme, extremely uh, successful athlete in whatever terms of success that means to you, you have to put in the extra. The, again, there's no skipping the extra, and that's kind of part of the backstory we wanted to talk about. And looking at, like we talked in my office before we were on camera, about the fact that you were a three-sport athlete and the value that has. And, and we're seeing the NSCA come out with data research supporting the idea that more football, 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 football specific training doesn't make for a better football player. Mm -hmm. uh, USA Hockey has come out and said something similar. More hockey, 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 hockey doesn't make for a better hockey player. More in the, one of the big volleyball organizations is saying the same thing for the volleyball arena, which is more volleyball isn't going to bring up the volleyball game. Being cross-trained, spending some time, functional training, developing core strength, speed agility is going to produce a better athlete regardless of where they play. And back when you were that age, the answer, the only answer probably, because I'm guessing you didn't have a FitWorks and sport performance right. there um, like we do here in DeKalb, but back then the answer was three-sport athlete. Right. Yeah, you know, that, that's what I did. And, you know, I, I played baseball my whole life growing up, baseball, basketball, football. I got to high school. I, I made a decision that it wasn't going to be baseball anymore. It was going to be track and field. And that was for a couple of reasons. I, I was pretty successful throwing the discus, but I was also a pretty good runner. But, you know, running track and field allowed me to build speed, um, endurance, it was kind of like an off season almost because it's an individual sport and I was able to focus on, you know, football, especially for me as I, as I got older, but I still put all the other sports. Um, but, you know, I say I was a three sport athlete, but I was also, I love playing golf, love playing tennis. You know I mean? I was doing all kinds of stuff and, and I'm a true believer that you need to be as involved as possible because you look at a football player, of course they're athletic, but I look at it, when I look at a football player, I want to see how good of a basketball player they are because basketball will teach you hand-eye coordination and, uh, and getting in the right posture and jumping and, and conditioning and all those kind of things. And it's a team sport as well, and it's physical. You know, so there's so many things of other sports that those, uh, those, those techniques that you have to use in those sports to be successful transfer over into other sports. You know, you talk about like hip mobility and strength. I mean, that goes from baseball to golf to football as playing quarterback. You know, so many different things, and that's what you learn by being – ultimately involved. So you're, once again, it comes back to that multi-sport athlete right. or assessing somebody's athletic ability on a basketball court transcends right into football. And that's just like, and we see that with the athletes who train here at FitWorks and in our sports performance program, we're helping them be more agile. We're helping them move faster. We're helping them produce more power. And at the end of the day, our focus is on make them a better athlete because that will make them a better football player or a better softball player right. or a better volleyball player. And that's kind of what you just said. Like track gave you an opportunity to train at Chandler being better, which made you better at football. It right. also helped your track. Absolutely. Um, but it wasn't like you were doing more football, 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 and you certainly won't. And this, this point cannot be stressed enough. You weren't sitting at home winter and spring doing nothing. Right. You were doing something that was going to help you be better in the fall. Yeah, you know, video games were kind of out of the, the, the picture for me. I still played video games, but I just, you know, I realized that, you know, I wanted to be involved in sports for competition, for, uh, for fun, uh, you know, and, and then just ultimately, you know, I knew that's, that's the realm I wanted to go. Um, so, yeah, you know, the, the, like, like you said, you know, being involved is, is great for, for becoming a better athlete, but just like college, you go to college to figure out what you don't want to do. Right? right, you know, it kind of minimizes, right. you know, it kind of reduces down, and it's a funnel. It's the same thing as a kid. You want to, you want to play as many sports as you can and be as involved as many activities as you can, because it's going to eventually narrow down to figure out. You know what? I don't like baseball. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not a good golfer. I'm not a great tennis player. But you know what? Dang it! I found a, a skill to play quarterback. Right, and, and it just over the course of time, you're building this data for your life, and I realized that was my competitive advantage. And what would you tell, like, if you go back and tell yourself something in high school, 
What do you know today that it would have been nice to know, whether it's training related, related, um, sport related, or better attention to studies and the mm. student side of the student athlete? Like, what do you know today that it would have been nice to know in high school? Well, I, I want to point out one thing before I move forward. Education is by far the most important thing out there. You know, you need to take care of your education. You need to try as hard as you can in school. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I, I got all A's in high school. I never got a B. And it's not because I'm smart. It's because I, I competed. And I wanted to take care of my grades so that when I got recruited, I knew that there would be no red flags on the education side. But, you know, education is key. Remember that. But the number one thing that... You know, thinking back, that I wish I would have told myself was nutrition, taking care of my body better when it comes to the, the foods I'm putting in my body, the amount of sleep I'm getting, uh, you know, re-lengthening your muscles after an intense workout, cold tub, warm tub, you know, all those kind of things, really understanding how your body functions, different sugars and, and salts and carbs and all those different kind of things. I wish I would have done that a little bit better because I think that would have helped me excel even more and the times I ran, the, the amount of weights or you know, pounds I was able to lift or you know, the, the ability to throw a football and last longer and recover quicker. I, I think nutrition, I, I wish I would have known more about. So for the younger people or the parents watching out there, what that translates to is just because your son or daughter or you is highly active on a court, a field, a track, or other, doesn't mean you can be a human garbage can in terms of nutrition. Right. Okay, you're hearing it from somebody that's played at the highest level for his sport in the country. And I can tell you firsthand, like we work with people of all shapes, sizes, and as well as athletes. And I can give you example after example after example of people that have had injuries, had mm -hmm. to have surgery to repair them. When we get help them get nutrition right to facilitate recovery, the ortho 